So in the previous video, we talked conceptually about how we could build some, something, right, where we had a switch that turns off and on at a carrier frequency. So this is the same as this. We have a message here, and we're going to put it through a bandpass filter so that we get a modulated message at the output. Now, what do we put here? So what do we put between A and B that will result in this acting like a switch with a carrier frequency omega C? Let's, let's see how, what we can put in between A and B that acts like a switch that opens and closes between A and B so that we, uh, after we put it through this bandpass filter centered at our carrier frequency, we can get this modulated message at the output. So let's consider a series of diodes, and we know that diodes, right, they're going to let some the, the current uh, pass in one direction when you have a high enough voltage, and then it's, it's going to resist, allowing it to go in the opposite direction. So this is a nonlinear device. Let's imagine that these go in A and B. So, right, we're trying to figure out what goes in A and B so that we can act like a switch. Let's postulate this series of diodes where here at the center uh, there is a controlling source, a controlling sine wave, sinusoidal voltage source with a carrier frequency omega c. Now this cosine wave is going to have some parts that are um, negative, right? So some parts below y equals zero, and we're going to have some parts above y equals zero. The parts below, these are going to result in a reverse bias. And so in the reverse bias, all of these diodes we can treat like open circuits. So we're trying to uh, force that current through in this direction. And, and we're, gonna, we're not going to say we get into breakdown, right? So this is just going to be an open circuit. So in the simple model, we'll say this is an open circuit when we're in reverse bias. When we're in forward bias, we can say that the diodes are working in the forward direction. We'll model the diode voltage, the diodes as a constant voltage, just like you did in your circuit class. And that means that we can uh, replace each diode with a uh, constant voltage source. And so long as these diodes are matched, so let's say the diodes on the left side are equal. This just means match, just means we, we chose the same part number and the ones on this side are matched uh, as well. This means that you're going to get this um, uh, change in voltage this way, then the change in voltage this way, it's going to cancel out with each other, uh, meaning that um, A and B are going to be at the same uh, voltage because you uh, step down, then you step up, but it's equal because the diodes are matched. Because they're matched, they're going to have the same voltage. That means that A and B are at the same voltage. So this is just like having a wire. So when you are in the reverse bias, then you have an open circuit. When you're in the forward bias, VA equals VB. And of course, right, if VA is equal to B, VB, right, this is just like saying we've replaced it with a wire. This whole thing is saying on like we replaced it with an open circuit. And this is a switch. This is a switch that turns off and on. And so long as this source at the center, right, so this wave, if it has your carrier frequency, this is going to result in multiplying a message by a uh, uh, Fourier series of coefficients, each one at multiples of your carrier frequency that you're interested in, put it through that bandpass filter, and at the final result, you're going to just get that one cosine wave that goes through. It's going to be centered at your carrier frequency, and this is your modulated message, and we just saw a um, diode bridge that you can use to make that, right? So this uh, now is acting like a circuit, where when you have the reverse bias, the switch is open. When you have the forward bias, the switch is closed. And each one is uh, uh, it's controlled by your carrier frequency.